This is the dosimetry briefing for radiological emergency workers. In the radiological emergency response program, an emergency worker is an individual who has an essential mission to protect the health and safety of the public and could be exposed to ionizing radiation from the plume or its deposition. In order to be an emergency worker, you must be at least 18 years old. You must not be pregnant. If you are or think you may be pregnant, inform your supervisor or officer in charge so you can be reassigned. You will be issued dosimetry to measure the amount of dose received while performing the emergency response work. And there is no eating, drinking, smoking, or chewing while performing duties in a radiological area. This is to minimize your chance of ingesting radioactive material. In order to protect the health and safety of emergency workers, we have exposure limits established. The exposure or dose limits are based upon a number of factors, but the most significant is whether or not you are working inside or outside the emergency planning zone. The emergency planning zone, or EPZ, is an approximate 10 mile area surrounding a nuclear power plant. Any airborne release from the plant is calculated to dissipate before leaving the EPZ. This is significant because the risk of ingesting any radioactive material from the plume is only present when working inside the EPZ. It's this risk of internal exposure that changes our dose limits for personnel. These are the exposure limits for an emergency worker during the initial stages or what's called the emergency phase of the accident. If you're working inside the EPZ, your dose limit is 25 rem and your turn back or dosimeter limit is 5R. If you're working outside the EPZ, your dose limit is 5 rem and your turn back or dosimeter limit is 5R. The turn back or dosimeter limit is the limit at which point you as an emergency worker would leave the area and get to a safe place. Emergency worker dose limits are based on the combination of external radiation dose and internal radiation dose. This is known as the total effective dose equivalent or TEDI. Your direct reading dosimeters measure only the external radiation portion of the TEDI dose limit. They do not measure the internal component. It's for this reason your dosimeter limit is lower than your TEDI dose limit when you are working inside the EPZ. Each emergency worker is issued a dosimetry packet in order to track the exposure they receive. Inside this packet you will find a permanent record dosimeter also known as a PRD. Now this dosimeter cannot be read by you, it must be read by a laboratory. This is also your record of exposure, so it must stay with the assigned individual at all times. Also inside the packet are two direct reading dosimeters, or DRDs. There's a high range and a low range. These direct reading dosimeters can be read by the user and then also re-zeroed and reused again by the user. There may be times when you are not issued the two direct reading dosimeters. When working at some facilities, such as monitoring and decontamination centers, area dosimeters are used to track emergency worker exposures. Because everyone is working in one location and the dose rates are not expected to be significant or fluctuate much, general area dosimetry can be used. All emergency workers st are still issued individual permanent record dosimeters even when area direct reading dosimeters are used. Also in your dosimetry packet you'll find foil packets containing potassium iodide. These foil packets contain either 7 or 14 tablets. There is also a manufacturer's information sheet that describes the precautions and risks associated with potassium iodide. We'll talk more about this in a moment. The last item in your dosimetry packet is the dosimetry report form. This is a very important form because it is the official record of your dose. 
Take out the dosimetry report form and complete each section as follows. In part one, worker identification, this section has all the information necessary to ensure the laboratory assigns your dose to you. Please pause this presentation until you complete all the fields in the worker identification section. Part 2 of the dosimetry report form is your mission assignment. The mission assignment comes from your team lead or your dosimetry coordinator briefing. The Teddy dose limit and the dosimeter turnback limit are assigned by the dosimetry coordinator. Now during the emergency phase of the incident, the Teddy dose limit is normally 25 rem and the dosimeter turnback limit is 5R when you're assigned to work inside the EPZ. When assigned to work outside the EPZ, your Teddy dose limit is normally 5 rem and the dosimeter turnback limit is 5R. Please pause this presentation and verify your dose limits with your dosimetry coordinator and complete Section 2. Part 3 of this form is the dosimeter record. This section records the details on your PRD and direct reading dosimeters. This PRD information is critical. This is how the laboratory knows which PRD is assigned to you. Ensure you accurately record the serial number from your PRD into the correct block on this form. Direct reading dosimeters, if assigned, are recorded in the provided spaces. Later, when you return from your assignment, complete the return information to record any dose you may have received. This section of the form is the running total of exposure. This is filled out if you have multiple entries into the radiological area in the same day or over several days. Your dosimetry coordinator can help you with the running totals. This is your record of potassium iodide administration. This section is completed only when you are directed to take potassium iodide. Take one tablet each day for seven days. If you're issued the 14 tablet foils, take two tablets each day for seven days. The back of the dosimetry report form contains some valuable information that you can use for reference. This section here contains all the default exposure limits. This section has some information on what to do during your assignment. And this section has information on completing your assignment or mission. Just keep this form with you and use it for reference as you're working in the field. Now that you've completed your form, here's some guidance on dosimetry usage. Before heading out on your mission, verify both direct reading dosimeters read zero. Place all the dosimetry, both the direct reading dosimeters and the permanent record dosimeter, on the front torso of your body and on the outermost garment. While in the radiological area, Read your direct reading dosimeter every 30 minutes. Someone should remind you over the radio when the 30 minute time limit is up. Report any readings of 1R or greater. This will allow the officer in charge the time to find you a relief and bring you out of the radiological area before you get close to a limit. If at any time your direct reading dosimeter approaches 5R, leave the area immediately. Even if you have lost radio contact with your officer in charge, when you reach a turnback dose of 5R, exit the area. At the end of assignment, record your direct reading dosimeters on your dosimetry report form. If you're going back on another mission, re-zero the direct reading dosimeters and start a new dosimetry report form. Remember, your permanent record dosimeter stays with you at all times. Potassium iodide is used to protect your thyroid from radioactive iodine that is found in the plume during a nuclear accident. It protects your thyroid by filling it with clean iodine so your thyroid can absorb the radioactive iodine. Potassium iodide is taken only if entering the EPZ, and this is because this is the only place you would come in contact with a plume from a nuclear power plant. 
The Ohio Department of Health authorizes its use. Your team lead or your dosimetry coordinator will direct you when to start taking the potassium iodide. Once directed to take it, take one tablet a day until gone. You take two tablets a day if you happen to have the 14 tablet foils. There are some risks associated with potassium iodide. Some of the potential side effects are skin rash, swelling of salivary glands, metallic taste, head cold symptoms, sore teeth, upset stomach, and diarrhea. Allergic reactions to potassium iodide can result in fever, joint pain, swelling of face or body, shortness of breath. These can be very dangerous symptoms, so you should report any allergic reactions to your team lead immediately. If you are allergic to iodine, do not take potassium iodide. At the end of your shift or assignment, there are some things you need to do. First is, report to a decontamination facility for monitoring and decontamination if necessary. If you don't know where your decontamination facility is, talk to your team lead or dosimetry coordinator. Then record any dosimeter readings on your dosimetry report form, complete and sign a dosimetry report form, and return the dosimetry packet and the, and the form to the dosimetry coordinator. If you're immediately reassigned or returning next shift, keep your permanent record dosimeter until directed by the dosimetry coordinator to turn it in. This completes the dosimetry briefing. Your role as a radiological emergency worker is vital for the health and safety of the public. This briefing, the dosimetry provided to monitor your exposure, the potassium iodide, and the monitoring and decontamination facilities available to emergency workers are all designed to keep you safe while you perform your duties. If you have any questions or concerns, please talk to your dosimetry coordinator or the person providing the just-in-time training.